Hi, I'm standing in front of the completed Morgan and Sidhu house, which we are now moving into and preparing to care for patients in the spring. We hope this place will be a beacon of hope for those who are faced with a life-limiting illness. But you know, the, the theme of hope uh, causes some to question. Uh, what is it that uh, is hopeful in the story of a hospice? Uh, somebody asked me that the other day. I thought it was a very good question. So I wanted to talk a little bit about hope. You know, when people are given a diagnosis of a terminal illness, it obviously rocks their world. It changes everything and can leave one feeling like they've lost control of their future. Receiving that kind of diagnosis is like having an unwelcome guest show up, unannounced, with no preparation, and all you can think about is wishing that unwelcome guest would leave. Unfortunately, with illness, uh, that's not the case. When people leave an appointment after receiving bad news from the doctor, they might only hear there's nothing else we can do. And that may sound like possibly being abandoned. For some people, that's a devastating experience. You know, some people would rise up in denial. It, it's a coping mechanism that we have as humans. It's like a shock absorber for the soul when things are too overwhelming. We hope that this place uh, provides an alternative view and I wanted to step inside and talk with you about the hope that might be present in a hospice. Hope is the alternative view for this chapter in your life. Hope looks for things that are positive for you. For instance, uh, when you leave the doctor's office after hearing the bad news, if there's no further treatment that's available, you might feel like that's the end of care. You might wonder, am, am I all alone now in this? Hospice wishes to say, no, you are not alone. All the people that work here, all the people who have poured themselves into creating this place of caring, want to say, we're here with you and for you through this journey. There are doctors and nurses and personal support workers who will be working here to make sure you are as comfortable as can be during this last stage. There are volunteers who will be also providing uh, an uplifting presence in the hospice, working here in the kitchen, making refreshments, providing tea, coffee, a place to, to gather and, and to share and to talk. You won't be alone. Your family and friends will be invited here. Notwithstanding precautions required during the pandemic, we have the long view about how this place will become a hub, a safe haven, a community of sorts to wrap around people as they face this very difficult stage. You know, others will wonder, will I be in pain in my last days? What will I be suffering? Well, the staff who work here, the doctors and the nurses will be devoted to relieving pain as much as possible, providing relief from suffering, from symptoms that are difficult. We'll be with you every step of the way, trying to alleviate whatever discomfort you're experiencing. And it would be important to hear from patients what they are feeling and, and going through so that we know how best to care for them. You know, others will have suffering, not just physical suffering, but spiritual, existential suffering, the big questions in life, the meaning of life, what, what does death mean in, in a person's journey. So we'd like to support those conversations. We want this place to be as calm and as restful an environment to be in, to really grapple with some of those big questions in life. Where needed, we'd like to help you access spiritual care, whatever is comfortable for you, to help guide you through answering some of those big questions. But this time in life is also a time to reflect on relationships, maybe some relationships that have been strained. And we often see in this stage of care, people coming to terms, people reconciling uh, strained relationships from the past and finding some closure as they uh, wrap up their lives. Every life that's 
fully lived has interesting twists and turns. Reminiscing and telling your story is a way of embracing and celebrating life's big moments and small moments too. Sitting around with friends and family and, and telling the stories that make up your, your life's interesting journey is a great way to connect. Sharing those stories with children and grandchildren gives you some hope that you will be remembered in, in the years to come as those stories come up. Sometimes in the retelling of stories, there's some embellishment. Maybe the story gets larger and even more interesting in the retelling. Sometimes there's a little bit of laughter along the way, and that's a good thing. Sometimes with the wisdom of years, one gains a new perspective on an old story. You know, it's a really healthy, cleansing, redeeming way of reviewing one's life and extracting the meaning and the joy out of these stories that have been part of your life along the way. I want to close by sharing a story with you about a local 16-year-old Brooklyn and her mother Kelly. Brooklyn gave me permission to share this story. In, in fact, she urged me to tell this story in the hope that it would help others who are facing a similar situation. Unfortunately, uh, Brooklyn just lost her mother, Kelly, to pancreatic cancer in recent months. This was a devastating loss. Brooklyn was with her mom every step along the way. She supported her through multiple trips down to the cancer center for treatments that were uh, time consuming and very expensive. Unfortunately, in the end, the cancer overtook her mother. Brooklyn's way of facing the future and making sense of all of this is to try to find a way to help other people who might be facing a similar situation. She finds hope in the knowledge that her experience will help other people someday. In fact, Brooklyn's spirit was uh, so consumed with helping other people that she kindled this idea of the Kelly Berger Legacy Fund, which is uh, a fund at the Cancer Center raising money to help defray the cost of expensive cancer treatments. Initially, Brooklyn had modest hopes. She hoped maybe $20,000, $25,000 would be raised. Well, this story has struck such a chord with so many people that the fund now has ballooned way beyond her expectations and has surpassed the $50,000 mark. It's an incredible story and uh, one that speaks of hope, uh, starting with the desire of a, of a teenager who just lost someone very special to her and wanting to bring something good, something positive out of this very difficult chapter in her life. In fact, Brooklyn has said uh, on her own website that raising money for local cancer centers is not just my cause, Brooklyn's cause, but it's everyone's cause and it should be shared by everyone. Because one in two Canadians will be diagnosed with cancer in their lifetime, just like Brooklyn's mother, she's doing this not just for her family, but for all the families who need to know that we're all in this together. So there is hope in being united together with people who are traveling through journeys that are in each of their own ways unique, but unified through the losses that people face and the difficult situations that they uh, come up against. We want our hospice community to be a place of hope, a place of sharing stories, a place of mutual support, and a place of paying it forward helping others who are facing similar situations with kindness and compassion. In the words of Dr. Judith Rich, uh, she talked about hope being like striking a match in a dark tunnel. It illuminates. It provides just enough light to see the path ahead. We want that hope to be here in our hospice. Thank you.